David Stadolsky, you're an American scientist living in Denmark. Before you got here uh, to this so-called sexually liberated Scandinavian capital, Copenhagen, uh, you lived uh, in the States. So where were you born and, and uh, what, what is your background? Yeah, I was born in New York City and uh, when I was very small my parents uh, moved to New Jersey. So I grew up uh, in central Jersey on a farm and uh, I was there until I finished high school pretty close. Well, what, what, what year is this? This is uh, 1964 okay. when I finished school. Okay, okay, high school. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, what, what did you do after high school? Well, I was uh, a student at the University of Michigan okay. as an undergraduate. What did your parents say to that? Then now you're moving to Michigan. Well, they, they just wanted to go from New York to New Jersey. And, well, and, and, well, then, and then you cut out and go to Michigan. No, no. Actually, uh, the situation was that uh, my father had died some years earlier. And uh, my mother died just before I finished high school. So I ended up with my brother, my oldest brother, who was at uh, the University of Michigan as a research associate at the time. And uh, therefore, I finished my last semester of high school in Dexter, Michigan, a little town just outside of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I began uh, my studies at the University of Michigan in 1964. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I lived in the United States in Salt Lake City, Utah, and uh, graduated from high school there, and even went uh, a couple of years to the University of Utah. Uh, when I got there to study at the University of Utah, uh, I, my, my parents, my, my, I, I, my family is a Danish family that immigrated to Salt Lake City when I was five years old, yeah. and uh, then I went into the army. and. Uh, and uh, while I was in the army, I told them, I wrote letters to them and said, I'm not coming back to the States because it's, it's too nice over here in Europe. I don't feel like going back. But, and, when I, and, then, and then before I was discharged, they told me that uh, uh, we're, we're leaving the States too, so we're going to meet you in, in, in Europe. Uh, but what happened was, they went to Copenhagen, and I was discharged from the army, and they wouldn't let me be discharged in Europe. I had to go back to the States. So uh, I, was, I landed alone, without a family, in Salt Lake City, and that was not really my intention. Uh, and, uh, and that was a kind of a difficult situation because I had no money, I, had, I wasn't prepared for anything. <laughs> uh, somehow I managed to get a couple of years of uh, education, but it was extremely difficult. Anyway, uh, that's why I, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised and uh, impressed that you're not dead and gone, being alone in Michigan, without uh, alone. It was with your brother, but your your fam the family support was gone. Yeah. Right. And uh, you have your brother to help you. Uh, how did you get along financially? What other kind of support did you have? to get started in your university education after high school? Well, you have to realize that the uh, situation in the U.S. at that time uh, was very good for students. And, and the reason for that was that uh, the Russian Sputnik had created a shockwave uh, in the Congress and they immediately decided that they had to improve education and so they passed what was called the National Defense Education Act. And basically the National, education, National Defense Education Act meant that if you were qualified to attend the university, then the money was there. Was it free education just like in Denmark? It was... Tuition free? free? Well, no. We, I mean, the, the tuition was covered by these funds. Okay. So you actually didn't pay tuition? I think somebody else paid it for Somebody me. else paid it for me, huh? right. And uh, then uh, when I was in graduate school, that had run out, you know, but then they had passed the National Defense Education Loan. Somebody's on your side. Uh, and uh, the uh, National Defense Education Loan was pretty much the same deal except you had to pay it back. 
unless you started teaching at the university. And if you were a teacher, then in every year that you were teaching, you would get 10% deduction, okay? And finally... You get a 10% deduction? Of what you owed. Okay. Okay, so 10% of the loans forgiven for each year you, you taught. Uh, and uh, then one day I finally got a letter from the bank saying, look, this is costing us more to collect than it's worth, uh, forget it. Uh, they didn't say that, but that was really what happened, okay? So you were, the, the, the debt was canceled? Yeah, what was left. I mean, I did oh, pay most of it. You paid most of it, but then the rest was canceled, yeah. okay. Yeah, but I mean, this was basically a direct effect of the Russian Sputnik and the moon race that had ensued immediately there. Did, did, did that make you a, a Russian sympathizer to the extent that you became a, a, a spy for the Soviet Union at that time? No. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think I even realized it at the time. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You know, the United States really needs something. Right now, the exact opposite. You're, you had the education benefits, very good benefits. Now, it's, it's a, a catastrophe of debt to all students. Yeah, well, or most of yeah. The, I, mean, I, I also worked at the university. You know, so the, the loans were not the you only... You had a job at the university doing yeah. something? What did you do? Well, I was... Wash uh, dishes or what? No, no, I had some uh, basically research, you know, money. You, uh, you, were, you were able to do research as a student before you're finished and qualified for doing research. Well, I, I was doing research as a PhD student, okay? But I mean... That was, was at the later, that, the, that was... That was the, much the last later. Years, the yeah, last yeah, years. But I mean the... Before that, you must have washed some dishes. Uh, no. No, uh, the uh, the funding was generally covered by the by the government. Uh, I mean, after this, uh, I mean, I had additionally uh, been granted a uh, stipend by the uh, the uh, health department in the U.S. Uh, the the they had something an administration having to do with alcohol and drugs and so on. And uh, since I was a psychologist, they were funding these kind of things, you know. And so a lot of that money was given as part of the uh, way that health was being promoted in the United States, okay. And then I had also, I was able to get money by, uh, for instance, at the University of California for doing research, um, okay, for my own research. Uh, so and friends? What? No, no, this was... Nepotism? No, 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 <laughs> this was just like... A, Money was the, the University of California wanted to improve education and I was doing something with, you know, uh, uh, related to that. So they were willing to give me some small amount of money. And then this uh, small amount of money was sort of tripled because uh, there was some subsidy for students, you know, who were working. So that if, yeah. you, if the university paid one fourth, then the government, federal government would throw in the other or the state government, I don't remember. Okay. So, you know, uh, there were many different sources of money. I mean, this was a different era. Mm, mm. Okay. And, and, uh, different universe. <laughs> Another planet. <laughs> well, certainly uh, for people who are getting an education in the U.S. these days, it must seem like it. You know? <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, you said psychology. You, you, you were doing a PhD and uh, you got a PhD in something. Was that psychology? Yeah. Uh, did you study anything else? Like, uh, was there any IT technology at that oh, time? Oh yeah, there was. MIT was doing something. Well, I mean, did this there were there was a computer science department. I took a lot of uh, courses. I actually. What, what year are we in now? Well, uh, it was. We talked about. I was okay, just, You graduated uh, from high school, right? Yeah. So uh, it, I was so at at this time. You know, uh, it was not only a lot of money available for students, mm -hmm. but there was. Uh, sort of an overload of students at the university, you know, because of all this money and then all these students across were coming, you know. Okay. And, and, and uh, that was the government's objective to get more highly educated people. Okay. okay, so the university had become overloaded, so they switched to a system where instead of having two semesters a year, they actually had three. Mm -hmm. summer, so, summer was one of them. Right, so you could have in the summer, they had half semesters, two, but if you took two half semesters, that was equivalent to a semester in the okay. summer. Okay. Okay. So, um, and then, of course, uh, you know, there was all kinds of research going on, and I had research jobs. For instance, my first research job at the university was 
at what was the Cooley Electronics Laboratories. Cooley? Yeah. What's his name? C O O L E Y. Okay, Some, cool. I don't Some know. Some person called Cooley. Some Cooley, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, what is it, Cooley? It's a slave, isn't it? And no, no. no okay. so, so, right, so, so anyway, okay. um, this, I had a job there uh, under a contract that the university had gotten from the uh, Defense Department to build a laser communication system. Okay. Sounds complicated. And uh, the, later I, I also had another job at uh, the Mental Health Research Institute. Okay. Getting close to psychology. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what else? I, I vaguely remember there was another job hey, in there somewhere. Did, did I get it right? Did you go into some studies in computer science? Computer something? Well, I, I was already working with computers as an undergraduate. Okay, because, working with them but not studying. Right, because we had one of the first computers in that laboratory. Mm -hmm. Okay, the what was called the Link 8. You were uh, into the pioneer phase. Right, so um, I, I was uh, able to do a little bit with that and a little bit uh, on the IBM 360, which was one of the early mainframe computers, okay? So I had, had a little bit of contact with the, with the mainframe computer and with the mini computer, okay, in the laboratory. And uh, then I started taking courses in computer science. In fact, I was actually admitted to the University of Wisconsin as a graduate student in clinical psychology and computer science. That's a kind of a strange combination, but fascinating. Right. It, it actually did not work because, you know, the psychology people thought this was a great idea as long as I did all of the requirements for, computer, for psychology. <laughs> and the computer so science... So it could be your hobby. Right? <laughs> and, so, and the computer science people also yeah. thought it was a great idea as long as I did all the requirements for a computer science. <laughs> so uh, this clearly was not a very good situation, you know, and uh, I uh, ended up um, getting my degree, a uh, master's degree in, uh, in psychology. Okay. okay. So master's degree, PhD. I, 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 I've, I've forgotten what all of these titles actually Well, the, the first, well, you have a master's degree, then you get a PhD afterwards? Or right. How, in, okay. in the American system, you get a bachelor's, typically, uh, would be a, uh, a bachelor's of arts, what they call, yeah, because yeah. the, the MA, master's you, of art, or what? Uh, you could get a master's of art, yeah, that's, uh, or master's of science. Uh, the psychology was considered to be a, a master's of art, yeah. And then you go on to the PhD. So uh, you normally have s uh, two or three years for a master's, and uh, then uh, you go on to do independent research for a couple of years and get the PhD. Uh, I've heard okay. someone use the uh, title of uh, BS, Bachelor of Science? Is that, that could be a Bachelor of Science, yeah. Okay, that, so even at a bachelor's level, you have Bachelor of Science, Bachelor, or whatever subject, your main subject you're yeah. studying. Yeah, uh, well... Uh, bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Physics, Bachelor I mean, of uh, Psychiatry? I mean, I'm, that might be more recent because I think uh, the BA was uh, also for science people at that time. I don't know. But, uh, okay. But I mean, it is, this, uh, it is basically four years as an undergraduate, okay, uh, after 12 years of primary education, okay? Yeah, right, 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 right. And then you have your four undergraduate years, and then basically the general idea is, is maybe two, three years for a master's, okay? Which is really sort of a, a booby prize uh, that's handed out to people who can't go on to the PhD uh, in these kind of programs. But for professional people, like if you want to become you know, a therapist of some sort, you know, physical therapist, you might be able to get a, a degree, a final degree as a master's, okay? Okay, okay. So there are, there are uh, people who find, you know, who do go just to get a master's, but for somebody who's gonna be a researcher, that's just a step on the way. Right. And so you some wanted, people you may want, not do it at all. And you knew you wanted to be a researcher, so you went on to get a PhD? Yeah. Okay. Are, have we covered all of the things that you have studied now at the university? Uh, well, not, not all of them, but I'll bring in a few more details, I think. Yeah, I mean, good, the... Good. Uh, 
I mean... Uh, Please mention anything that you'd like about that is relevant in any way, or interesting, whatever. Yeah, I would, I would say that, you know, the, uh, the, my psychology ended up being heavily uh, in the direction of social and political psychology, okay? You were nearing sociology. Well, there is, I uh, consider myself to be a social psychologist, okay? Okay. So social psychologists uh, uh, study groups of people, okay, and perception of groups and this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, sociologists really tend to study something else. I mean, oh. so there's two types of social psychology. There's the psychological social psychology, and then there's the sociological Social psychology, okay. <laughs> but I okay, great, but great. I did indeed have contact with sociologists uh, in mm -hmm. in my education, uh, which actually could, I was actually at Stanford for my final education. I was there on a postdoctoral fellowship. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, did you finish anything there? Did you, were you there just doing it, or did you? Well, I finish with a degree. Or well, you don't get else? a no. You you don't get a degree as a po uh, a postdoc. I mean. Uh, you know, that's, you get something in your CV? Yeah, well, you know, you have basically, a postdoc is basically, uh, you're doing research, uh, okay. pretty much okay. under your own power. And, okay. and uh, yeah, so it's, it's very similar to having a job, but the, uh, usually you you're, have more flexibility because you're not really working uh, for anybody. Is and, it much more satisfying when you get to that level? Oh yeah, because you know you don't have you know required courses. I mean, you can go to courses, but you don't it's have to. It's more your own interest that right. determine whatever you do. Yeah, it is. It is a period generally when you don't have like teaching responsibilities or things like that, yeah, or, or, or very little. You what know. about your uh, financial situation? Well, this postdoc was. Other than when you were teach when you were teaching. Uh, is that no, also better or worse? Well, <laughs> uh, I mean, teaching is, is, is uh, if it's the normal tenure track, then you're getting more, generally getting more money. When, when you got into this, where you were, this situation, yeah, uh, where you were free to research and do more things on your own, yeah, was your economic situation better or worse or the same as the previous five years? It was slightly better, but not much. Okay. I mean, because it was basically still the money was coming from the from the government as a stipend, you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, Did you ever get into so-called real uh, uh, work and wages from the uh, godlike private sector instead uh, of the, instead of government uh, wages? Well, let me think. Uh, well, no, not as a full time. I mean, I had some consulting work, but uh, not as a job. I know I don't. Not well. I did certainly have summer jobs as a student. Do you think this is a leftover for from your sympathies toward the communist Soviet Union <laughs> <laughs> that you cling to government, uh, whatever financing? Or no, this is just a standard. It's, it's just uh, the way. It, that, that's the way it was for everybody, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, sorry. if you want an academic career, you typically. I mean, you could be working at a private university, okay, yeah. uh, or a public university, but it doesn't make. Or, or, or into pharmaceuticals, where the uh, pharmaceutical industry will probably pay a hell of a lot to get somebody to do exactly what they want. Yeah. Uh, that never, that never passed your mind. But no, your mind, right? no. I mean, I, I had my own research program, so I was not interested in going and doing somebody else's stuff. You know. Okay. Um, you want to mention some more things? I think that covers it. I mean, in terms of the education. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I could comment a little bit about uh, the social life in America, which is... Right, right, uh, right. That's what I wanted to get into. What, bef before you comment <laughs> at some time on Danish social life, uh, what about social life in America? What, what's, what's your, from, from the time you were born uh, until you left the, the States, uh, what, 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 how, how did your opinion of the American social life uh, develop? Did you have one? Well, I, I would say one, that uh, as I, be, I became more and more aware of the social and political situation in the U.S. as I got older, okay, okay. and had some experience. Okay. Uh, like, for instance, uh, 
One experience was uh, filing a lawsuit against the federal government. Oh, that's that's good stuff. That's good for TV street space, really. Okay. <laughs> we want right. to get... So I can tell you a little bit about that. Say, say something about that. Okay, well, the, the uh, situation was that uh, when I entered uh, the uh, University of Wisconsin, mm -hmm. okay, as a clinical psychology graduate student, the uh, federal government was getting a lot of uh, trouble because uh, there had been this war going on in Vietnam for quite some time and uh, the bodies coming back were all black. Uh, and the reason for this was because the white students were going to college and getting student deferments or had, had other kinds of connections, you know, so they could get off uh, without going into the military. Um, so the government decided, well, this had to be solved because it was a, getting to be a, you know, PR problem. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it, should, it should be. And so they decided, well, what we'll do is we will eliminate all these student deferments. Oh, yeah. And the uh, <laughs> thing is, if we eliminate all these student deferments, then we'll have this overload of people coming into the selective service system, which is what they call the military conscription in the U.S. And uh, therefore, we will have a lottery to select which ones will go to Vietnam. All okay. right. Okay. Well, the uh, I was one of these students that was included in this lottery. And then wasn't everybody forced to go get into the lottery? Everybody well, that was eligible for being a soldier. Of uh, these students or whoever. Well, every everyone they, who everybody. was eligible in that year, okay. students and, okay. who had okay. had had their deferments uh, terminated, and anybody else. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and uh, a lottery was held to select who was actually going to be taken into the military that year. So. Uh, being one of these students, I had an interest in this process, and uh, when I was over at the computer science department mm -hmm. one evening, uh, after this lottery, someone had drawn a picture on the blackboard uh, showing the average score okay, for each month of the year in this lottery. And uh, it was clear that the people towards the end of the year were getting much better chance of being inducted into the military and sent to Vietnam for some reason. So having studied a little bit of statistics, I felt this was not really very likely that this would appear. And I ran a statistical program to determine exactly uh, how likely it was. And uh, I discovered that there was only one chance in 50,000 that this result would occur by chance. So uh, armed with this knowledge, I went down to the local Associated Press office and said, this lottery is not right. Uh, look, uh, it's only one chance in 50,000 that would have come out that way. You ought to get this. Manipulated, it's fraud or whatever you call it. And so the guy said, well, okay, whatever. But I mean, if it's, uh, you know, not a court case, I mean, you know, it's not, it's nothing we can do. Uh, how do you have any environmental news? That's what's hot right now. So, so uh, after I got this news, I decided, okay, well, if it's going to take a court case, then I'll have to find a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to pay for it. Yeah, that's the other problem. Okay. So um, I was able to locate a, a lawyer, and a, a case was filed in the federal district court mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. And the, the headline in the paper the next day was, Draft foe and attorney general play high card. Draft foe? I was the draft foe, the enemy okay, of the draft. Okay, yeah, yeah, and yeah. the attorney general was, of course, the prosecutor. Okay. 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 And uh, he had laid out a deck of cards on the table and asked me to pick one at random. Okay. And uh, he, this was part of his argument to show that I could have picked any card, you know, and so on and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was how the headline uh, came to be in the paper, okay? I, ho I hope he didn't win his point. Well, his point was, you know, not related to the, 
the problem because obviously if there's a row of cards laying on the table, you can pick any card just as easily. Where if you have a, a, a jar with this big stack of, of capsules in it, you know, you're more likely to take one off the top, right? right. Especially right. if you're convinced that they've all been mixed up. Okay. But it wasn't true that they'd all been mixed up, okay? Mm -hmm. And therefore, there was a bias, right. okay? And that's how it ended up that so people born... So court case? Well, the court case was uh, never tried be because the judge felt that there was simply not enough evidence there to stop the induction of all of these men into the military. So he... Mm -hmm. Uh, was not willing to issue what's called a temporary restraining order. But he was willing to put the case on his calendar. Okay. Yeah. However, that means that it comes up, you know, a couple years later. And by this time, all of the 13 men that had been involved in that court case uh, were gone into some other uh, situation, yeah. either Canada or whatever, you know, medical problems or... Mm -hmm. So there was really nobody left to carry the case forward, no. okay, okay, when it came up. But you tried. Well, I mean... You uh, must have drawn some attention. Maybe, maybe they uh, got a little something... Uh, in my, in, under the table, back uh, behind the scene, maybe somebody was, you know, trying to do a little better or, or just getting better at covering things up, I don't know. Well, I mean... Um, it really was impossible for them to prevent the publicity, okay? Which, what, was, was there a lot of publicity? Yeah. And, and did you, uh, <clears throat> did you uh, win, win some support, or did, they, did the criticism of the, uh, uh, of the way the system worked, did, did that grow? The... Well, certainly. I mean, this was just another example of the incompetence of the Nixon administration. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was, it gave me an opportunity to go on TV and denounced Richard Nixon as a war criminal before it became popular. You did that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay. Okay. It, it also gave the head of the psychology department an, uh, an excuse to kick me out of the, of the university. They, uh, did they actually do that? Yeah. Okay. I mean, do, you, do, do you have the, this frame? The, 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 getting kicked out must have been, you must have gotten a letter or something that said, you're, no, no, you're no. kicked out. No. And then you put it into a frame and hang it on your wall. No, what, what happened? Wall. No, what happened was um, that uh, I became extremely well known in the town, no, no, and no especially tor notorious, or well, or for some, and famous with others. Right, and and I was famous, of course, with the students. Yeah, right. Great, good. Who elected me to public office? <laughs> Okay. What does that mean, uh, to public office? For well, what? student public office? No, no, this, this is a uh, account was of the, uh, I was what was called a uh, member of the uh, county supervisor, which, okay. which is like uh, the, uh, it would be in Denmark, where you used to have these Amt. In the Amt, yeah, okay. And okay. Uh, so that. Uh, you could have an election to the people running the Amt, and that's basically okay. what the county supervisor was. Okay. So it was not being on the city council, okay, mm -hmm. which, oh, okay. but on the county council, yeah, basically, okay. okay? Yeah, yeah. So I was placed on the, uh, a couple of committees, uh, including the public health committee and the homeroom study committee, you know, everybody who is serving mm -hmm. in an elected position gets committee work and so on. Yeah. And uh, this uh, placed me in a position where I was supervising one of the health, uh, mental health facilities in the county. And the, the uh, Department of Psychology had students working, you know, mm -hmm. there yeah. uh, as part of their training. And uh, they did not look fondly upon having a student uh, there, you know, <laughs> who would be uh, sort of on the wrong side of the right, right, uh, right. power pyramid, right? <laughs> okay. And, uh, oh, that's great. Yeah, really, that's good. Good stuff. So uh, basically what it came down to was the chairman of the department declared he was not going to sign this form that uh, had to be signed so the government could pay my tuition. Mm. 
okay? Because I already had the government committed to paying my tuition at the university, yeah. but it, of course, had to be signed by the department head to show that I was